Hello, my name is David Barter. I am the practice manager for Microsoft Technologies here at Green Pages. And what I'm here to do today is talk to you about uh, Office 365 migrations and some of the pitfalls that we have run into as an organization where we have migrated our customers. Uh, this is a multi-part series. There are really three parts of the series. So this is part one, and we're going to talk about a couple of things in each one of these. So today, this first part, we're going to talk about uh, migrations and what people think and why they aren't as easy as you seem to think they are. Uh, one of the things that folks often do is that they don't understand how much your IT deficit has impact on your, your ability to migrate data, how much of that has an impact on your ability to migrate, and really bad data inside of your exchange environment. So one of the things that we always recommend to a customer is making sure that they are as clean as they possibly can, that the mailboxes are as small as they possibly can be, that you have had conversations with the users that would have the most impact, so they understand what this is going to be. Uh, oftentimes we have to deal with users that are working in some sort of remote desktop type environment, Citrix environment, and there's changes there that need to be done. It's not just a simple straightforward migration of that user. Uh, there are tools that make it easier on the back end, but at the end of the day, really what we're trying to deal with is how do we lessen the impact and increase the probability of success with the end user and make sure that their experience is the best possible experience they can have. Uh, one of the other things that often, often bites migrations is around the whole spam filtering world. And we talk a lot about uh, what the Microsoft tools give you. Uh, they give you spam filtering, AV and AS. They give you encryption. But is it really best in class? And that's oftentimes you have to make a decision as a customer. What is your tolerance for it? Uh, we all get a lot of spam, especially this time of year around the holidays where everybody's trying to sell us everything. And so you get that at work at well as well. And if you're used to a Barracuda type solution or you're used to some other mainstream top tier type environment and you move over to the Office 365 environment, the amount of effort that you may have to put into to recreate what you have in your current solution to get the Microsoft solution to operate in that manner oftentimes is really not worth the headache when you can stick with your product. Uh, Barracuda, MX Logix, all of the major ones that are out there, McAfee, all support Office 365, all support it natively without a lot of effort on your part, and there are added benefits by having them as well, let alone the fact that you may already have that software and you've spent all this time creating the blacklists, the whitelists, all of the domains that are good and bad, all of that stuff that you have to do only to turn around and recreate it and learn a different interface. So I think that's one of the biggest ones. And I think the, the, the last one that we'll talk about today is sort of this whole deal with outbound email and the address change. Uh, folks want to make sure that when you are determining what your URL is for your outbound address change, is that you're putting something out there that is truly what you want your domain to be. And what we found oftentimes is customers have an internal domain name and an external domain name. And they don't realize that that external domain name is already being used the new one that they want to use is already being used by another customer as their, inter as their external domain name, and now we've got mail issues. Who's going to get the mail when? Because there can only be one record out there of this URL, this domain name, this david.barter at logics1.com. That's all it can be. I can't have two of those or folks aren't, the mail doesn't know where to go. So addressing that part of it about what your externally facing domain name is going to be for your mail and that it's something that one is both easy to input as well as makes sense and is available, moreover than anything else is available, uh, is part of what I would say is probably critical to all of this. So these three things, dealing with the migration itself and prepping for the migration, looking at spam filtering and what you're doing today and compared to what Microsoft offers you there, and then finally what your outbound email address looks like and what that's going to look like to the world, those are, those are just three of the things that we're talking about. So thank you. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, you want to engage Green Pages at any point, please reach out to our team here, one of the sales folks or myself, and uh, my information will be on the blog, and you can, we'll try to answer your questions as best as possible. So thank you for your time today.